Good morning, Calvary. This is a special day. Uh, it's Good Friday, the day when all of Christendom pauses to remember that Jesus died for us. It is a terrible and wonderful day. It is a beautiful and tragic day. As we stop to think about the gift that was given to us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because as, as followers of Jesus, we understand that we're all sinners and that God sent Jesus into this world to be our savior, to be the sacrifice for our sins so that we could be in relationship with him. And, and so Good Friday is, is kind of an oxymoron because it's a terrible day when Jesus died unjustly, horribly, but it's a good day because he died for you and for me so that we could be forgiven of our sins, so we could have a relationship with God, so that we could have eternal life as sons and daughters of God. And, and I would remind you that if you're watching this wondering, does God really love me? The, the crucifixion is a declaration of God's love for you. The Apostle John says this, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And, and today, as you think about the sacrifice of Jesus, as you pause to remember his death, and, and of course on Easter in a couple days we'll celebrate his resurrection. Uh, let me just encourage you to read the, the crucifixion account. I, I, I'm a fan of, of Luke chapter 24, or 23, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus in Luke 23, uh, just simply because of the, the relationships that are there, the conversations that are there. And, and I want you to think about the voices of the crucifixion. The voices of the crucifixion. There's really four voices that stand out in the crucifixion account in Luke 23. Uh, and I want you to figure out which voice is your voice in this. Uh, the first one when you're reading the account is the voice of sorrow and lament and grief. Uh, it's the voice of the women who are wailing and weeping as Jesus is being led out to be crucified. And, and uh, that voice struck me because there's a lot of people right now in today's world that are voices of lament, voices of grief, voices of sorrow, of, of tragedy, and, and they're voices of despair. And that's a voice that was present on the day that Jesus was crucified. Um, and, and there are people right now who, who can only express despair and sorrow and angst and horror at the situation that we're in. Even though we've got wonderful people who are advocating for us and protecting us on the front lines, uh, there's still people who are voices of grief. Uh, another voice of the crucifixion is the voice of anger and accusation. Uh, the religious leaders came and mocked Jesus while he was on the cross. They, uh, they said, hey, if you really are the Christ, save yourself and we'll believe in you. Come down off the cross. Uh, one of the thieves that was crucified with Jesus said, hey, if you're the Christ, save yourself and us. Get us off these crosses. Uh, of course, the voices of anger are present in our world all the time. Whether they are political voices of accusation or whether they are religious voices of accusation or whether they're just uh, community voices of accusation and anger, you're not doing it my way, you don't believe my way, uh, therefore we make all kinds of accusations about people's intelligence and motives. Uh, those are voices that were present at the crucifixion, uh, but they're not the voices that we really want to be our voices. Another voice that was present at the crucifixion was the voice that was asking for grace, a voice that was asking for grace. I call this the voice of desperation. That other thief on the cross, a man who's sentenced to death, a man who's in the process of being executed, says to his co-conspirator, uh, uh, the other thief that's being crucified with him, don't you care? We're dying for what we did. This is just, but his is unjust. And then he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He made a request of Jesus to remember him. He had no basis for that request. He was not a good man. He was a guilty man. He was not somebody who had a chance to serve God. He was just simply desperate and he asked for grace. He asked Jesus to remember him. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're despairing. Maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're desperate enough to call out to God 
and say, God, I need you. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I have no hope apart from you. I know that's a voice that's often in my life because I know that without Jesus, I'm nothing. I've got no hope. I've got no reason. I've got no joy. So my voice is often one that says, Jesus, remember me. How about you? Are you asking God for grace on a regular basis? The final voice of the crucifixion that I want you to think about is the voice of mercy. It's the voice of mercy. It's the voice of Jesus when he prays from the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's the voice of Jesus when he says to that thief, today you will be with me in paradise. He gives grace and mercy to the people who are abusing him. He gives grace and mercy to the people who are mocking him. He gives grace and mercy to an undeserving thief. You see, Jesus is the voice of mercy. He's the voice of forgiveness. He's the voice of hope that rings out through all eternity. And he's speaking to you. He's including you. He's saying, Father, forgive you. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. You're going to be with me. And in fact, I've prepared a place for you and I'll come again and take you to be with me that where I am, you will always be. You see, that's the voice of mercy. That's the voice that I want my voice to be, speaking hope and truth and love to people every day, everywhere. And that's the voice that God wants you to speak. He wants you to be that voice of mercy to your spouse, to your kids, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to your friends, to your family, all of them, so that they understand that this is love. Not that you and I loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son Jesus to be an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Today, I hope and pray that you reflect on the gift that God gave us in Jesus, that you ponder once again the glorious and tragic beauty of the cross and the love expressed for you. God bless.